Well, if you haven't taken the opportunity to actually calculate the cross product for two vectors at least a couple of times, you really should pause this video, do that operation of a couple times, maybe even verify that the cross product is orthogonal to at least one of the original vectors, although you should check both sometimes. Do that first. The purpose of this little segment is to just highlight or point you in the direction of other uses of the cross product. Some we will get to later in this course. Some you will get to if you were studying more about matrices and linear algebra. So let me just give you a visual. If there were two vectors and they originated from the same point and you were to calculate the cross product of these two vectors, I've shown you that it would generate this vector that is, if they were touching, perpendicular to U and perpendicular to V. We use the word orthogonal because vectors don't necessarily have location. They have direction and magnitude. That's right. So it turns out that if you calculate the cross product, you get a vector. And that vector has uh, uses in and of itself. But if you were to take this set of vectors and build the parallelogram, the parallelogram. So if we just look at this parallelogram, parallelogram. It turns out that the magnitude of that vector you made, remember I used the single bars, but you can use the doubles, that the magnitude of that cross product is actually equivalent to the area of this par parallelogram area of this parallelogram. I probably left something involving this into an early assignment for my students, but I want to tell you, it kind of becomes a big deal later um, in some more advanced calculations that look more like calculus, derivatives and integrals and such. Um, an area calculation that area of this parallelogram. I do have a handout for my students where I kind of walk through the algebra of it. It's rather messy, but it is doable within your skill set. So there's one little property to mention. Now, this one is not really me telling you the answer, but I'm telling you to go look for it. If you were to calculate the cross product of the two vectors and you were to reverse the order. In algebra, we would uh, talk about the commutativity of this. Um, the commutative property of addition and multiplication says you can switch the order and they would be equal. So I'm just gonna put a little notation here and put a question mark. You need to research what happens if you switch the order. You could try a couple calculations and make a guess. You could go look it up in a book. You probably could ask your phone. Check this out. Know what this fact is. Next little trick. What happens if you take a vector and you cross product with itself? What happens when you take a vector and you cross product with itself? Remember, when you do a cross product calculation, you do get a vector. So the question is, is there anything special about that vector? So I told you something, a key rule. I'm asking you to check a rule. I'm asking you to check into this one. What happens with this little calculation? In our section of our book, um, there are a wide variety of geometric or shape related properties. The area of the parallelogram is just one of them, but there are two or three others that are mentioned by the book. Um, 
read. Look into it. See what kinds of properties there are. Um, I typically don't ask my students to memorize these formulas. I have never done it, in fact. But I like to bring them to light. I like to mention them. But since you can just flip open a page of a book or you could just do a quick search, what are some other properties of the cross product related to shapes? You will find some. You'll probably find some that aren't in our book. And then one more, which will be great in the physics class. The cross product um, has is a calculation that's used in finding what is called the torque. And I'll just leave you with that little bit of information. Um, if you are someone who has to take some physics, it's worth it reading up on this. It's not a difficult computation at all. If you're not a physics major, you might not have as much interest in it. But I want to draw your attention to this as one of the numerous things that you can do with the cross product. It will not be long before we use the cross product scalar multiplication and dot products for some other types of uh, development we need before we can begin the calculus. So stay tuned.